Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was the Shinigami of the Zero Division? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. 2000 years have passed since I died and become the first Shinigami and rise through the ranks in each division. I am the only Shinobi from the elemental nations to become the apprentice of the goddess of death. I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, son of the Yellow Flash and Yandaimi Hokage Minato Namikaze and the Red Death Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze. After my death during the last Shinobi War 1 became legend like the other cages of my former home did. Hashirama Senju User of Mokaton, Wad Release. Leader of the Senju clan, founder of Konohagakure and well as the Shodem if the village. He was also the one who crippled Madara Uchiha in the Valley of the End and had the ability to tame the Nine Biju. Toborama Senju. The Naidame Hokage, younger brother of Hashirama Senju and master of the water element. His skill with Sweden Jutsu was so great that he could pull water out of the air and use it at its fullest without even needing a source of water. He also created a jutsu that allowed you to bring back the dead and use them in battle. Here is an Serutobi. Sandame Hokage of Konoha, apprentice to the Sho and Nidimes and veteran of three shinobi wars. He was also known as the Shinobi no Kami and Professor back then due to his skills and knowledge of jutsu and how each one works. He was also the sensei to the legendary Sanin and was also the man whom I thought of as a grandfather. Minato Namikaze, Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha. Apprentice to Jiraiya the Gama Senin, the Kiroi Senku of Konoha, and my father. He was considered a genius in the ninja arts, a prodigy the surpass prodigies. During the Third Shinobi War, he created two jutsu called the Hiraishin and Rasengan. It was because of him that Konoha won the war and he was the only man, aside from me, to be given a flea on sight order by the enemy due to the fact that he wiped out an army of Nin from Iwa in less than a few seconds. After the war, he saved the village from the Kayubi no Kitsune, the strongest of the Biju by sealing said creature into his son, me. Tsunade Senju. Godem Hokage of Konoha, granddaughter and grandniece of the Sho and Naidame, slug Sanin and student of the Sandame. She was a medic who could treat any wound and cure any disease. She also possessed the strength of a titan and could smash boulders with her index finger and cause earthquakes and fissures with a tap of her heel. She was the strongest Kunoichi in the nations. And finally me. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, the Rokudame Hokage of Konoha, former Jinchiriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune, Second Flash and Gama Senin of Konoha. I managed to complete and fully master the Rasengan, Hiraishin, and Sage Arts. I defeated Kakuzu the Bounty Hunter, Kisame Hoshigaki the Monster of the Mist, Sasuke Uchiha, Pain, Nagato the Wielder of the Rinnegan, and Madara Uchiha founder of the Uchiha clan and wielder of the Eternal Mangeku Sharingan. I defeated all of them and died killing Madara Uchiha. The fight between me and him was legendary, surpassing the fight he had with Hashirama Senju for the title of Hokage at the Valley of the End. Our battle lasted for five days straight and we each gave it our all and in the end it was a draw. Before we died, Madara complimented me on my skills saying that I have surpassed the other cages and him in terms of skill and power. To be honest I pitied the man. He was born in a world full of war, bloodshed, and death and all he wanted to do was protect his clan and family from dying and his younger brother gave him his eyes so that he could accomplish his goals. In the end his clan, the very people he swore to lead and protect, turned their backs on him. Honestly, I too would have lost it if the people I swore to protect with my life betrayed me like they did. After my spirit left my body I ended up absorbing the Kyubi into my being something unexpected happened to me. I not only gained the powers of the Shinigami, I gained the powers of the Hollow making me the first wizard or masked warrior. A wizard is a Shinigami who has gained the powers of a Hollow and when said reaper defeats their inner Hollow their speed, strength, stamina, and other abilities that high level Hollows gained like Sero. When this happened I met the goddess of death and she trained me herself in the four disciplinary arts of the Shinigami. They were Zanjutsu, Kido, Hakudo, and Hoho. Zanjutsu is swordsmanship and the person learns how to wield a zanpakuto or soul cutter. 
Each person has their own form of the sword art including me but I however excelled at the style since I was a master swordsman in my last life. Then there was Kido which was similar to ninjutsu only it required spirit energy to use them and they were ranked 1 to 100. There were three forms of Kido. Way of destruction, way of binding, and way of healing. Then there is Hakuda or in other words hand to hand combat. I also excelled in that as well. Last but not least Hoho. It is based on agility or fast movements. Even though it was never stated clearly this also relates to the Shinigami having the ability to walk on air using spiritual power by collecting and solidifying reishi beneath their feet. This allows a Shinigami to gain traction on thin air to either freely move about or to stop themselves from falling. Another form of Hoho was Shunpo. It is a movement technique that allows the user to move faster than the eye can follow and speed is the main point of the technique. The method is characterized by how fast one can get from one point to another using the least amount of steps. Training and skill are what determines how fast a user of Shunpo can move and those of little skill in the technique or those who haven't used it an extended amount of time would obviously be out of practice, causing those individuals to be considerably slower, which requires the use of more steps to move the same distance and become winded far easier in a shorter amount of time. To me Shunpo was similar to my dad's technique minus the kanai being used and I have to say I love the technique. I mastered it to the point where I can move at short distances without any effort and leave after images of myself at my current location. The queen herself gave me the title Shinjin. During my training, I met Yamamoto Shigikuni Genryu Sai and together we founded Soul Society and the Gote 13 with me becoming the captain of each division and I created most of them with each one having a purpose. The first division was created for those who had the most experienced members of the Gote 13 and the Sotecho title was given to Yamamoto Shigikune Genryusai after I was promoted to the position of Taicho of the Zero Division. The second division was similar to my former life. They were similar to the Anbu Black Ops and dealt with things that would never go out to the public and they were trained in the art of stealth and assassination. They were also the final defense of Soul Society. The third division was made for those whose Zanpakudo had unique abilities. Next was the fourth division. The fourth division is the medical supply division. They are responsible for both treating the injured and doing most manual labor such as cleaning Serati. Because of this, they have keys to most of the buildings and know the underground sewer system well. The fourth division is further divided into teams that have specific assigned jobs. The fifth division had Kido users and barrier caster making them a defensive division. I personally mastered and created a few of them and even without the incantations or spell number, they are destructive in my hands. I even created the Keto Core who became masters in either forms. Then I made the 6th division which was suited for large assault forces and nobles, I specifically made it for the heads of the Kuchiki clan because I wanted the nobles to participate with those of lower status and learn that they were not as important as their subordinates. The seventh division was made to police the Soul Society and I learned much of the inner workings of the Soul Society through there as well as the Shrine of Penitence that held criminals. The eighth division was made for strategists and keto users. Ninth was the investigation division. They would control the media and communication. You could say that it was based off my godfather's spy network. Tenth was a bit like the second division, except they observed and tracked hollows. Eleventh was the combat division, focusing solely on Zanjutsu. 12th was a division used for research and development and 13th was used to police the Rukongai. I was also the only Shinigami throughout the history of Soul Society to gain three Zanpakudo. Yamaji's apprentices, Jashiro Yukitaki and Shisui Kiraku gained two and are the only captains aside from myself to gain more than one Zanpakudo. My three blades are based off the three Japanese goddesses, God, Sukuyomi, Amaterasu, and Suzano. On the training grounds of the Zero Division the sound of blades clashing and flesh hitting flesh is heard on the training grounds. Slash marks, craters, and scorch marks littered the field and two blurs could be seen moving and clashing against each other simultaneously. One blur skids back and started to pant heavily. The blur was apparently female. She was 5 feet 6 and was wearing a black hamaka with shikashu and wore tabi socks with sandals. She had an hourglass figure and D-cupped S that weren't too big or too small. She had a heart-shaped face with ivory-colored skin. Her eyes were a forest green color and she had long flowing reddish-orange hair that stopped to the middle of her back. In her hands was a katana with a silver blade. The crossguard was in the form of a yin-yang symbol and the hilt was silver with black diamond patterns going down it. 
Her name is Kirio Hikafuna, former captain of the 12th Division of Soul Society. She scans the area looking for her opponent. She senses a presence behind her and with a twist of her body, she turns and blocks the blade of a taller figure. He was six feet two with spiky blonde hair that went down to his shoulders Minato's hair style. He had cerulean blue slitted eyes and canines jutted from his upper lip. His attire and footwear was more shinobi-like than Kirio's was and he had arm guards on his arms as well as fingerless gloves that were black. He also wore a haori that had flames licking the bottom and on the back was the kanji for Zero Division and Shinsoku. His name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze founder of Soul Society, former captain of all divisions, and captain of the Zero Division. In his hands was a katana that was silver also and the cross guard was circular with two moons on the opposite sides Shinso's cross guard. The hilt had crimson red cloth with silver diamond patterns going down it. He also had a nodashi that was strapped to his back and another katana next to an empty sheath. Naruto grins at Kirio who tries to kick Naruto in the torso but the blonde shunpo's away from her and she once again reacts by blocking an overhead strike. Your reflexes are getting better Foon Chan but, he says and points his left index finger at her stomach and her eyes widen. Show, thrust, he says and Kirio is sent flying backwards, hitting the wall hard. She lets out a painful grunt and then she looks up only for her eyes to widen when he pointed his glowing index finger at her. Biakurai, he says and fires a beam of white lightning at her chest. She shunpos to the left and avoids the blast that put a hole in the wall. She appears once again in front of Naruto whose eyes widen and she grins, aiming her palm at his head. Hado hash 33. Shakaho. She says as a red orb appears in her hand and fires it point blank at Naruto's face causing a small explosion. When it clears, her eyes widen in shock when she only sees his haori on the ground with a hole in the middle that had smoke rising from it. Geki, strike. Naruto calls out and Kirio finds herself unable to move due to the fact that a red light paralyzed her entire body. You killed my haori Fun chan What did it ever do to you? Naruto asks as he walks towards her still form and she glares at him. How do you keep doing that? That shot was point blank. Not even you could have avoided it. She states as the red light dies down and she is able to move again. What can I say? I'm that good. He says with a grin on his face. She sheathes her sword and punches him playfully in the arm. Smart ass. She says as she crosses her arms against her chest. Naruto grins and wraps an arm around her shoulder. Now Foon Chan there's no need to act like that to your Taicho. He says getting a giggle out of her. You never change Ruto kun She says and a pout appears on his face. Why do you always call me that? He mumbles. Because it makes you sound cute and I love it when you pout like that. Naruto scoffs when she says that. I am not cute, Fun Chan. Ruggedly handsome, yes, but not cute. He states and she rolls her eyes at him. You are so full of it. She says and removes his arm that was around her. So are we finished with our training today? She asks and the blonde nods. Yes, we are, Fun Chan. Well, I'm heading back to my quarters to change. Oh, and you owe me a new Howry since you burned a hole in the other one. He replies but then he tilts his head to the right when she threw a pebble at his forehead. That's your own fault Namikaze. You always substitute yourself with the damn thing and why do I have to pay for it? I'm the one always telling you not to wear it when we're training but you do it anyways. She yelled at the blonde who blinks and tilts his head to the left. So what's your point? He asks only to block a fist with his palm while her brow twitched. Jerk. You love pissing me off don't you? She asks. Can you blame me? You're cute when you get mad Foon Chan. He says and she blushes when he rubs her hand affectionately. Tell you what Foon Chan, you get me a new custom made Howry and I'll give you those heaven on earth massages you love so much. He says and her eyes become stars. Okay. She says and grabs the destroyed Howry and Shunpo's away. Naruto laughs at that. Man Foon Chan must love those massages I give her. He says to himself and that was when one of his subordinates appeared kneeling before him. Namikaze Taicho. The Queen of Souls wishes to speak with you. She says it's very important sir. He says. I see. I'll be there as soon as possible. And have someone clean up the training ground. He orders and the Shinigami nods and Shunpo's away. I wonder what Izanami-sama wants. She only calls me when a dire situation occurs. He says and Shunpo's to his quarters to change out of his training clothes. 
said captain was now walking through the marbled halls of the royal palace, heading to the throne room. Naruto couldn't help but wonder why she called him for. Hey Gaki! yelled a masculine voice from his head. Naruto rolled his eyes and knew who it was. You need to stop worrying so much kid. I swear being with you for almost three millenniums and you're still a worry wart. You seriously need to find a girlfriend. Suzano says. He wore samurai battle outfit with storm clouds and lightning on them and had slicked back spiky blue hair with yellow streaks. Naruto almost tripped on his feet and his brow twitched. Shut it Suzano. I get enough of that from your sister and I don't need it from you. Naruto said in his mind. So we finally agree on something Iechaniki? Amateratsu asked. She wore a white kimono with sun and flame patterns on it and her hair was jet black and tied into a ponytail with a crown in the shape of a sun on her head. Suzano looks at her and snorts. Who said I was agreeing with you Emoto? He says, making her glare at him. Why are you such an ass Suzano? Are you still mad at me because I set your mirror on fire? Kami you need to grow up. It's just a mirror. She yelled and his eyes glow while sparks of electricity cackle around them. That wasn't just a mirror. Tu San gave me that mirror and you burn it with your stupid flames. He yelled back and a fiery aura surrounded her body and her eyes glowed white. My flames are not stupid. At least I don't cause unneeded destruction with my powers. She yelled back. While they were arguing, thunderstorms and fire appeared and flew around the scene. During this event, Sukuyomi was sitting cross-legged in midair. She was five feet five and had ivory-colored skin. Her eyes were a reddish-brown color and she wore a red kimono with moon and wave patterns on them and she had red hair that was tied into a ponytail with a crescent moon pattern in on top. She saw the fight and sighed. You two really need to grow up, she said making them stop to glare at their sister. Stay out of this Sukuyomi. They both yell at the same time and she rolls her eyes while a small full moon appears under her sitting form. And you wonder why Naruto-kun doesn't come to you too for advice. She states and they gawk at her and fume since it was true. Naruto snickered at this and spoke through his mind. You two seriously need to let that grudge go and act more like Yomi-chan. He replies while the moon goddess giggles. All kidding aside, what do you three think of this mission I am about to receive from Izanami-sama? He asks them. Whatever it is it must be very serious for the goddess of souls to summon you. The last time you were summoned you had to face that Vasto lord. Amatiatsu said and Naruto nods. Yeah. I haven't had a fight that crazy since I faced Madara. To think he forced me to not only use you three at the same time but also my wizard form at its fullest. The battle lasted for ten days in Hueco Mundo. He says since that fight was one of the only major ones he had while serving the captain of the Zero Division. He made fighting Yama J.I. look like a walk in the park. He answered until Amateratsu spoke up. Why are you calling him old when you both are the same age? She asks. Because I don't show my age and you know that when I absorbed Kyubi into my being my longevity made my structural appearance stay this way. He explained and Sukuyomi nods in agreement. I can't picture you looking like an old man Naruto-kun. She says and Naruto chuckles as he makes his way to the throne room. He stops at two large red and black doors and they slowly open, revealing a beautiful throne room that was polished and glowing almost as if the throne itself radiated power and glory. Sighting on the golden throne was the Queen of Souls Izanami. She was five feet six and wore a royal kimono that was black and silver. Her hair was jet black with silver streaks in it and her skin complexion was a creamy white color. Her nails were painted black and so were her toes. She also wore black lipstick and eye shadow. She sat on the throne with one leg crossed over the other and her figure would make any woman jealous and any male hyperventilate. Naruto slowly approached his former master and stopped a couple of feet from the throne. Izanami slowly opened her eyes which were silver gray. They sparkled with life and were beautiful and powerful. The aura that surrounded her was soothing yet deadly. You summoned me Shisho, master. Naruto asks and the goddess of death who smiles at him and lightly chuckles. Naruto-kun how many times do I have to tell you to call me by my name? I am no longer your master and you are no longer my student. You may not be my equal in terms of power but you are the strongest Shinigami in the spirit realm. She says, making Naruto rub the back of his head in embarrassment and chuckle lightly. Sorry Izanami-chan, old habits die hard, he responds and she shakes her head at her first former student. Yes I know. 
All joking aside there was a reason why I summoned you. You see Naruto-kun, I have recently felt an imbalance between the spirit and mortal realm and it's not a good one. The souls of those that have passed on to be reincarnated have how should I say, disappear. She said. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this and blinks. Disappear. How in the world is that possible? Only you have the power to do that. He states and she nods. Yes I know but for some reason more and more souls just keep vanishing and most of it is occurring in soul society. Someone or something is causing this imbalance and to make it worse more hollows are appearing in the mortal plane than normal and whoever is doing this must be stopped or else they could cause both realms to collapse and end all of existence. I want you to find out who is causing this and eliminate them. However you will have a limiter on you and also use your bankai as a last resort. Your wizard powers are permitted also. She says and Naruto nods. So use Bankai as a last resort. Man the last time I used my Bankai was when I was facing that Vasto Lord. The bastard almost killed me that time. But even though that guy was a pain to beat he was one heck of a fighter. He made the fight I had with that Tem Madara and the 8 Biju look like a walk in the park. He says and Izanami nods because when she saw the state he was in when he returned from Hueco Mundo she was surprised beyond belief. Naruto was barely clinging to life and it took him half a year to fully recover and gain his strength back. He looked like he just fought his way through the nine levels of hell. Too bad I didn't get the chance to finish him off. But he received just as much damage as I did and I know he's not behind this because he's still recovering from his wounds. Naruto answers and Izanami lets out a sigh. So when should I leave Izanami-chan? Naruto asks. Leave as soon as possible. This event worries me greatly and I'm not one to jump to concussions. I sense that a great and terrible battle will occur and it'll decide the fate of both realms. As a kami I cannot interfere because it'll make the situation even worse so you have to stop this Naruto-kun. She then stands up and lightly walks down the steps and towards the captain of the Zero Division. Naruto watches as she approaches him until she is standing before him. Izanami reaches her hand OT to him and slowly caresses the left side of his face. Naruto-kun, you must succeed. If you don't then there is nothing I can do. Do what you must to stop this from happening. I am giving you the right to take over the Gote 13 if you must. She says and he nods and gently places his strong firm hand into hers. I will not fail Izanami-chan. I won't let what you foresaw but something does tell me that me and my other acquaintance will meet again soon. Also I would like Hekafuna to come with me with your permission. He says and she nods. Permission granted, and Naruto. She pulls him into a hug shocking him and he returns it. For my sake don't die. I almost lost you once when you came back barely alive after fighting that Vasto Lord, I don't want to lose you again. Please be careful, she says and tightens her grip on him. I will for your sake. He says as they release each other from the hug. I'll send you a message via Hell Butterfly when I get the chance. Yeah, he says and Shunpo's away while Izanami sighs and brushes a strand of hair away. That boy always makes me worry. Willing to sacrifice his own needs for others. He nearly lost his own life to save his subordinates during the war between the Shinigami and high-ranking hollows. No wonder he made a great leader in his previous life. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, you are without a doubt one of a kind. She says as she walks towards the window and looks at the clear and beautiful sky. Naruto was walking out of the palace and looks up at the sky as well. I don't know why but something tells me that this is gonna be one hell of a mission. He says and heads towards his compound to inform Hakafuna about their new mission. Naruto was heading back to his quarters to inform Hakafuna of their current mission. As he made his way to her quarters she appeared in front of him via Shunpo and had an ear-splitting grin on her face and in her arms was his new Haori. Hey Naruto-kun I got you a new custom-made Haori now about my reward can you start on my neck, shoulders, and back because I have this crick that's really bothering me and my shoulders are really stiff and my back is so sore that it. It's gonna have to wait Fun-chan. Naruto stated while she kept talking. It's gonna have to wait and. Hey wait a minute. Are you telling me that I'm not getting my massage? She yelled as she did the demon head technique with her eyes glowing red and flames were shooting out of her mouth. Naruto sweat dropped as he saw flames in the background. Do you have any idea how long I had to wait for this stupid thing to be made? Five hours. And it killed half of my paycheck damn it. 
I can't believe you'd pull a stunt like this. I knew you were a trickster Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze but to use my weakness against me is MMPPHHH. She would have ranted on but Naruto placed his hand over her mouth and she blinked a few times and noticed his expression was serious. Are you done? He asks in a serious tone. She blinks again and nods while he removes his hand from her mouth. The reason why I said it would have to wait is because we have a mission to go on Kirio Hakafuna and it's one that'll decide the fate of the spirit and mortal realm. He said making her eyes widen. He only said her full name when they had to go on top priority missions. Is it really serious Naruto Taicho? She asks getting a nod from him. Very serious. Go get your things packed and meet me in the Zen Garden. I'll explain everything there before we go. He says getting a nod from her and hands him the Haori. You owe me Naruto-kun. I expect to be given a free massage soon. She says with a smirk on her face and he chuckles. I got you covered Foon chan If you're lucky I'll give you a full body massage. He says with a sly grin on his face and her whole face is cherry red. She went from having a blush on her face to angry. I knew you were a pervert Naruto. She growled out getting a chuckle from him. No I'm not. I just have a healthy appreciation for the female body. There's a difference between that and being perverted. Naruto explained while her brow twitched and turned away, storming off to her quarters muttering about Taicho's being jerks and teasing their subordinates. Naruto snickers and heads to his quarters to get his gear. Two hours later, Hakafuna was in the Zen garden waiting for Naruto. She had on a dark green cloak with a hood on and her Shinigami outfit and she had her things in a suitcase she created that has an unlimited amount of space in it. That was when Naruto appeared in a dark blue cloak with a hood on and also had the bangs on the sides of his head hang out of the hood. Kirio blinks and sees that Naruto hasn't brought anything with him. Um, Naruto where is your stuff? She asks. Naruto smiles and pulls a large scroll out of his cloak. Her eyes widen as he puts it away. Hey I may not be able to use ninjutsu anymore but fuinjutsu works even better. Thanks to Izanami-chan I can still use them. He says with a grin on his face until it becomes serious. Anyways we'll be heading into the Gote 13 once we pass the Senkaiman gate we'll both separate and see if we can find out about the souls that keep disappearing in soul society. He said getting a nod from her. Naruto pulls out a golden royal seal badge and aimed it in front of himself. Kirio Hikafuna stood behind him while the seal on the badge glowed and a thin yellow line formed in front of them and afterwards it formed into a human-sized circular portal. Once it was fully open, they stepped through the portal and it closed behind them. Gote 13 District The Senkaimon opened up and Hikafuna and Naruto appeared out of the portal and into the district and it was currently night time. It's dark and the place is clear of patrols. Excellent. He says and pulls Tsukiyomi, moon goddess, out in a white aura surround the sword while the reflection of the moon appears on the silver blade. Migaku Kisha Shiko no Tokiyami, Tsukiyomi, shine upon the everlasting darkness moon goddess. He chanted. A bright light coats them and then slowly spreads throughout the Gote 13 and then disappears. Naruto smirks and then sheaves his blade but then a frown forms on his face. That's odd. He said getting Hikafuna's attention. What is it Naruto-kun? She asked. Someone managed to protect themselves from the illusion I placed all over the district. Either that person is immune to illusions which is highly impossible or that person has an illusion-based Zanpakuto as well and a powerful one at that. He states while Hikafuna frowns. But I thought Tsukiyomi's illusions were more powerful in the moonlight. How can someone overcome it when her powers are at their fullest when there's a full moon? She asked while Naruto thought about it. I honestly don't know Foon Chan but whoever it is that can avoid her moonlight illusion at its fullest must be skilled in using his or her Zanpakuto's abilities. He said as he sheathes his blade but then senses a group of souls disappearing. We'll worry about that later, I just sensed a small group of souls vanishing from this realm. Let's go, he said and they shunpo to the location. Forest of Rukongai. Naruto and Hikari appeared in the field only to find a set of clothes lying on the ground but no one in them. The blonde slowly approaches them and kneels down, placing a hand on the clothes. This is very strange. Souls just don't up and disappear like nothing. Izanami wasn't kidding when she said that the souls just completely vanished yet they don't descend to her realm. Someone or something is causing souls to cease to exist in this plane and ascend to the next. He said. 
Hekafuna reached into her cloak and pulled out a black square electronic device that starts to beep and scans the area making her eyes widen. Naruto look at this, she said walking over to him and handing the device to him. Naruto looks at the screen and his eyes widen in surprise. These are remaining traces of hollow class spiritual energy. Does that mean that a hollow is responsible for the soul disappearance? He asked Hekafuna who shook her head. No because there are small traces of human and Shinigami soul particles merged with the hollow particles. Hollows completely devour the souls of their victims leaving no traces in order to become stronger they absorb the soul completely but this, someone is experimenting in combining human and Shinigami souls with hollow souls and the result of doing this causes the souls to become unbalanced and end up imploding and ceasing to exist. He said while Hikafuna gasped and covered her mouth with her hands. Nine years later. Ever since that event the two Shinigami of the Zero Division have been trying to find info on the disappearances that have been happening for the past nine years. One night they found out that Yamamoto had sent five captains to search for the missing captain and lieutenant of the 9th Division since they haven't reported in for the last couple of hours since they were ordered to search for what was responsible for the souls missing. The new captain of the 12th Division, Kazuki Urahara requested that he be allowed to assist in the investigation since his lieutenant hasn't reported in for the last couple of hours either and feared for the worst but the man's request was denied by the captain commander which made Naruto frown at this. But later on that night Kazuki decided to go against the captain's orders and he along with the captain of the Kido Corps. Tessai Tsukabishi headed out to aid the other captains. Later that night, Urahara and Tessai made their timely arrival to stop the 5th Division lieutenant. Sosuke Aizen, from dispatching his captain. Following the event, Urahara asks Aizen what he was doing there. Aizen plainly answered that he happened to be there upon the situation to help his injured captain. Urahara knew that he was deceiving him as he stated that there were no injuries on the victims, he noted that they were inflicted by a process called, hollowfication. Surprisingly being happy of Urahara's successful deduction, Aizen proceeded to leave the scene of the crime with his henchmen, stating that, there's nothing more to do there. To stop them from retreating, Tessai performed a high-level keto spell against them, only to be countered by Aizen's own, allowing them to escape. With the criminals long gone, the duo was left to tend to Shinji and the rest of the victims who were deep in process of holofication. After Urahara admitted that he could possibly help them at his lab, Tessai resolved to use a forbidden keto spell to transport them to the 12th Division barracks. During the event Naruto and Hikafuna watched the even and were impressed that the current captain was able to perform a two high-level keto spells with one being a forbidden spell but the blonde couldn't help but be on edge when he saw Sosuke Aizen. The man reminded him too much of Madara Uchiha and knew that just like his former enemy, this worked in the shadows and was the also responsible for the disappearances of the souls and despite his status as a lieutenant the man was strong enough to at least take on a captain level Shinigami especially with the abilities of his Zanpakudo Kyoka Suigetsu. He wouldn't be surprised if everyone in the divisions minus him and Hikufun were under the complete hypnosis spell the blade conjured. Come on Hikafuna, we've got a captain and his comrades to aid. Knowing those people at Central 46, they'll be having guards at his door soon. He stated and they Shunpo to the 12th Division District. In his lab, Urahara tried to reverse the process using his created item, the, Hogyoku. Unfortunately, it ended up as a failed process, not having the desired effect Urahara expected and afterwards he fell asleep. Naruto and Hikafuna appeared in the man's quarters and found Kazuki snoring on the desk. A tick mark appeared on Naruto's face while Hikafuna sweat dropped. How in the world did he become in charge of my old division? She mumbled while Naruto walked over to the desk, grabbed Kazuki by the end of his collar and flung him into the wall head first. Go grab the keto expert and the captains that are in the lab and head to the Sokyoku hill. He said to Hikafuna who nods and shunpos away. Kazuki slouched to the ground groaning and rubbing his head in pain. He looked up only to see a man in a hooded cloak with blue eyes staring down at him. WH who or, he started to say until Naruto picked Kazuki up by his collar. Kazuki Urahara, Naruto asked getting a nod from the man. You need to leave now. He said making the man's eyes widen. Wh what? Wait a minute who are you? He asked now fully awake. For now I'm an ally. I know about Aizen and we have to leave because Central 46 is sending their guards to arrest you and Tessai for your actions last night. He replied and set the man down. 
L last night but, he started to say. Eisen has framed you with documents on you performing experiments based off of holofications and used the abilities of his Zanpakuto Kyoko Suigetsu to pull it off. You need to leave now, Naruto said sternly. Kazuki could tell that Naruto wasn't lying and nods. I see but I need to get my, he started to say until Naruto pulled a black suitcase out of his cloak. Your Zanpakuto as well as everything else you created is in this. He says and tosses the case to him which he catches. Now come on, my partner got everyone else out of your lab and have headed to the Sokyoku Hill. Naruto says. I see and that's a good thing because I have a hidden training area underneath the hill where we can meet a good friend of mine. Kazuki states getting a nod from Naruto. Good now get going, he says and they shunpo out of the district. An hour later, Kazuki was in the underground training room underneath the Sokyoku Hill and saw Tessai and the unconscious captains and lieutenants in the place. He was about to speak up until he heard a voice he was familiar with. Kazuki, he turned around to see Yoruichi Shihoin walk in the training area. Yoruichi, I thought you would already be here by now what took you so? Bonk, ow, Kazuki cried as he fell on his ass clutching his head in pain due to the fact that his childhood friend karate chopped him in the middle of his head hard. Where the hell were you? I spent the last hour and a half searching after you Yabaka. She asked with an annoyed expression on her face while the man sat back up blinking and rubbing his head. You were but I was already informed about Central 46 sending guards to arrest me and Tessai but, he explained. There's no need to explain Urahara-san. I'm already here, Naruto said as he walked around a large rock with his black shinobi GI and customized Haori. And so is my partner. Hikafuna appeared out of nowhere with her Zero Division uniform on his next thing Naruto knew he felt a tonto placed near his throat courtesy of Yoruichi Shihoin. Who or and how did you find this place? She demanded in a low and dangerous tone. Naruto remained calm and a small smile plastered on his face. Yoruichi Shihoin, I must say that your skill in Shunpo is incredible. He stated and faded away shocking the master of stealth and assassination until she felt a tripronged kunai placed near her throat. But despite possessing the title Shunshin, Flash Goddess, you're nowhere even close to my skill in Shunpo. He said with a smile on his face. Yoruichi's eyes widen in surprise and disbelief while Kazuki and Tessai were stunned. When did he get behind me? I didn't even sense his movements. She thought while he removed the kunai from her neck. Hikafuna on the other hand rolled her eyes at how Naruto was showing off. That was when Kazuki spoke up. You still haven't told us who you two were yet, he stated and Naruto rubbed the back of his head and chuckles. Sorry about that, now then my name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, the current Taicho of the Zero Division. He said and the three Shinigami's eyes bugged out and their jaws dropped to the ground and silence filled the air. Naruto on the other hand chuckled at their stunned reactions. Shocking isn't it, he asked. Yoruichi was the first to snap out of her stupor. What? B but you haven't been seen in the last millennia, she shouted while inside her mind, a chibi version of herself was jumping up and down squealing. Ever since she was little Naruto had become her inspiration in mastering both Hakudo, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and Shunpo, flash step, to the point where she'd become a legend like him. The blonde was an inspiration to every Shinigami out there due to the fact that he was not only one of the founders of Soul Society and the Soul Academy but he was in charge of every division as well as a master in all the Shinigami arts and had no equal. The only Shinigami that ever came close to being Naruto's equal was Yamamoto Shigakuni Genryu Sai, the Saudaicho of the Goti 13. He was also the only on in history aside from Kiraku Shunsui and Jashiro Yukataki to ever gain more than one Zanpakuto. Naruto looked at her calmly and spoke up. Yes I have been gone for a while to say the least. Now then my partner who helped Tessai San and the Holofeed captains and lieutenants get here is the former captain of the 12th division, Kirio Hakafuna. He said which caused Kazuki's eyes to grow into the size of dinner plates. H Hakafuna San, he asked pointing a shaky finger at the former Taicho who smirked. Hey stupid genius and hey to you as well Yoruichi Chan, she said to them. Naruto spoke up afterwards, now then we should all head on to the real world and I'll explain everything there. We'll be residing in Karakuta town which is located in Japan since I already have some land bought in that place and will be our place of operation. 
he said pulling out the royal seal badge which opened up a Senkaimon gate to said town and the land as well as the compound Naruto brought. Yoruichi and Tessai helped Hikafuna get the others and head into the gate. Oh and Kazuki, Naruto said getting the man's attention. I want to know everything about that man Aizen and his intentions once we get settled in and you better not leave any info out understand. He asked the man in a serious voice who in return nodded and had several gigai ready for them in the soon to be wizard group. Several hours later, after they all got settled into the compound Naruto had purchased along with the land Naruto decided now was the time to explain why he and Hikafuna were here. Now you three are all wondering what two of the Soul Queen's highest ranking officers are doing her right. He asked getting nods from the three. Are you three aware of the souls that have been disappearing in soul society for the last nine years? He asked getting wide eyes from them. Nine years. We didn't know about the disappearances until a month ago. Yoruichi stated while Naruto smirks. And that is why the Zero Division has eyes and ears all over the Siraiti as well as the Gote 13. After all the Queen of the Shinigami should always know what her subordinates are up to no matter how minuscule it is. That is why she sent us to find out what's been happening to the souls that were supposed to go back into her realm and be reincarnated. He finished in a serious tone and that was when Hikafuna spoke up. Aizen apparently is the one responsible for the disappearances and has been doing experiments on both human and Shinigami souls by trying to merge them with the essence of hollows and he's been doing it behind your backs ever since. She explained. But the real question is how could Aizen deceive all of us without anyone's notice? Tessai asked while Naruto frowned. Apparently Aizen possesses an illusion-based Zanpakuto known as Kyoka Suigetsu, Mirror Flower. Water Moon, which has the ability to control the five senses to the point that it can make the target misinterpret another person's form, shape, mass, feel and smell to be that of the enemy. He explained to the shocked trio. I see, but how could he activate it without anyone noticing? Kazuki asks while Nato ponders on this and then smirks. I think I have a theory since I too possess an illusion-based Zanpakuto. He said and drew Sukiyomi from the sheath while the other three wonder why he did that. Migaku Kisha Shiko no Tokiyami, Tsukiyomi, shine upon the everlasting darkness moon goddess. He chanted and a flash of light surrounded everyone for a few seconds and then it cleared. Kazuki, Yoruichi, and Tessai blinked in confusion. Nothing happened, Yoruichi said while Naruto smirks. Really, two voices said between her. She looked on both sides to see two Naruto's standing beside her with smirks on their faces but then she saw replicas of Hikafuna as well. As you can see Yoruichi, Tsukiyomi also has the ability to control the senses of those that set their sight on the moonlight that emits from her blade. But that's not all she can do. The two Naruto's and Hikafuna's disappear in a flash of light and then the cross guard glowed red for a few seconds. They suddenly found themselves in a world where the sky and moon was red and the compound as well as them were black with white outlines. WH what is his place? Kazuki asks as he looks around. This Kazuki is my Zanpakuto's second ability called Sukuyomi, Moon Reader. It's a powerful illusion-based technique where the target is trapped in a world where the user which is me can control time, space and well as mass. In this world I am God and I can use this technique to torture and break you spiritually and mentally or just to privately talk. I can also have you all experience the past horrors of your lives. In here a few seconds would feel like hours, hours would feel like days days feel like months, months feel like years, and years feel like an eternity. He explained while they remained speechless. There is only a few ways to break the illusion which is to have a strong mindset and spirit. He explained and with a snap of his fingers the world shattered and went black. Kazuki, Yoruichi, and Tessai suddenly found themselves back in the compound remaining in the same spot as last time. Wow that felt, strange. Kazuki stated while Naruto grinned. Yeah you'll get used to that especially since you've only been in that world for only a few seconds. He stated as he sheathes his Zanpakuto. Now as for my theory on Aizen's Zanpakuto it either releases something like an odorless mist or a light like Tsukiyomi does but the activation is located where it can target the five senses easily instantly such as the guard, blade, or even the hilt. He explained. And who knows, it's possible that he used its illusion on every captain in soul society. It's a possibility. Kazuki stated, so what now Naruto-san? Kazuki asked and a pissed look appeared on Naruto's face. 
Before I get to that as of now I'm really pissed of with Yamamoto as well as all of Soul Society. Naruto stated getting confused looks from the three while Hakafuna frowned. I left that old fool in charge of Soul Society's well-being while I'm gone and he allows a bunch of fucking civilians who I highly doubt have never seen a hollow in their life push him around. He said while the knuckles in his closed fists crack slightly making them all wince. The Central 46 shouldn't have any form of power whatsoever over the Shinigami except to govern the districts. I swear I'll completely destroy the Central 46. I created them and I can easily destroy them especially with the crap they pulled a long time ago. He stated and Kazuki frowned. You mean like the genocide of the Quincy? Kazuki asked and Naruto nodded. Killing humans simply because they are different sickens me. He sighed as he ran a hand through his hair to calm himself down since that report reminded him of when Madara had the Yandaimi Mizukage start the bloodline purge in Karigakur. Quincy's deserves as much respect as the Shinami would and I swear those old fools will pay for their actions towards them. He stated softly. So what is it that Aizen is after? Hakafuna asked Yurahara who sighed. The Hogyoku. The two raised a brow when Yurahara answered. A few years back, I was coming up with a way to strengthen souls and the Hogyoku was the result. The scientist explained, it was a way to erase the line between Shinami and Hollow and, he didn't get to finish because a pissed off Naruto had grabbed the man by his collar and slammed him into the wall releasing key on the stump man. You idiot do you realize what you've done? What the hell were you thinking creating something as dangerous as that? Naruto yelled at Kazuki. P. Lease I never meant to make it as powerful as it is now and IT tried many different methods in destroying it. IO only wanted to help Soul Society not harm it. He strained out with his hands on Naruto's wrists. Hikufun placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder and said blonde looked back at her and saw the solemn look on her face. He sighed heavily and released his grip on the man's throat. I'm sorry Kazuki-san, he said and leaned against the wall and slowly slid down rubbing the bridge of his nose with his index and middle finger. All of that damn hard work I put in creating a place where souls could live together in peace without having to suffer like they did in the mortal plane is now a breeding ground for arrogant and greedy nobles who only care about themselves. He said in a depressed tone, while Hakafuna crouched down and gave his shoulder a comforting squeeze. The three former Shinami could feel Naruto's depressed mood. According to history he worked hard to create soul society and bring peace, it must have been a vision shattering thing to him as he saw all he worked hard for go to waste. Yurahara felt sympathy for the blonde, he himself tried changing laws with the central 46, but they flat out denied any attempt saying they had the infinite wisdom of the soul queen. The place was quiet for a few seconds until Tessai spoke. Namikaze san from what I read in Soul Society's history textbooks you were a person who believed that anyone can gain what they want through hard work and could overcome anything including those who are considered geniuses in the eyes of others. He said while the captain on the Zero Division and everyone else listened. You were considered an inspiration to every Shinigami in Soul Society even the ones who didn't believe in themselves especially when you made a certain motto that the Taichos, Fukutechos, and seated officers follow. I believe it was those who break the rules are trash but those who abandon their comrades, family, or friends for trivial things like honor and their reputation are lower than trash. I'd have to say that Kazuki and Yorusihi-san followed that motto. He stated making the two rub the back of their heads in embarrassment. You even stated that anything can be rebuilt in time. Naruto chuckled. Yes I did say that. I knew I was an inspiration but to almost every Shinigami in Soul Society I wouldn't have believed it. He said and Hikafuna helped him up until Yoruichi spoke up. Naruto-san it was also stated that you had two more Zanpakuto but I don't see them. She said while he smirked. That's because I placed them in seals I created on my person so that way I can always arm myself with them whenever I need to plus their shikai isn't meant to be used indoors and are too flashy if you get my drift. He stated. Oh, was all she said. Now then before we even think about dealing with Aizen I believe our guests need to know about their new, condition, and be trained in it. He said getting nods from everyone. For now our best bet is to keep a low profile from Soul Society until Aizen decided to make a move in the future now let's go we've got a lot of work to do and little time to do it. He finished and they start to discuss their plans on how to deal with Aizen later on in the future. A week has passed since Naruto, Kazuki, Yoruichi, Tessai, 
and Hikafuna left Soul Society with the former Taichos and Fukutechos now turned wizards. Right now said Blonde was talking with Kazuki while Hikafuna and Tessai were setting up the compound that Naruto bought. Right now Naruto was wearing some new clothes that were similar to the ninja uniform his father wore especially the white coat that had blue flames licking the edges as well as flames on the sleeves with the kanji flash on the back and also wore a pair of fingerless gloves. Right now he was sitting in the living room with Kazuki who was dressed in new clothes which was a black coat with white diamond patterns on the end and a green GI with green short pants and a cane along with a pair of Geta sandals. So how long until our friends wake up? Naruto asked Kazuki who pondered on this. Today since their bodies have managed to adjust to their hollowfication and in the untraceable gigais I made. He answered while his fellow blonde nodded. That's good to hear. And where's the little Nako? Naruto asks with a smirk on his face while Kazuki snickered at his pet name for Yoruichi. Still doing some recon in Soul Society and with her skills no one will even know she's there. Kazuki said and got a nod with Naruto. That's good to hear. Well I'm gonna go check up on our new guests. He said as he got up and walked off. Underground training area. Shinji Hiroko groaned as he woke up in the futon backquote what the hell happened. He thought rubbing his neck backquote the last thing I saw was Aizen. As he looked around until his eyes shot open in shock, he then saw a note next to him. To the former Taicho, 5th Division. Take these clothes and all will be explained. Signed, A Friend. Shinji narrowed his eyes at the note but then slipped on the clothes, which consisted of black slacks and a burnt orange dress shirt with a light yellow tie, he then picked up his zanpakuto which had an hourglass for a hilt and a red cloth around the handle and was in the form of a katana. So, you're finally up, a gruff voice said. Shinji turned around to see a man leaning on a rock-like wall, he had a black tank top with white edgings. Then he had green cargo pants and black combat boots and a wakazashi in his hands while crossing his arms. I've been waiting for several hours, he walked up to Shinji. Shinji shook his head, what the hell is going on here? He asked, you went berserk on us Yano. Kensai nodded confirming what had happened, I know, apparently my inner hollow went out of control. Shinji blinked, giving an intelligent, huh. Kensai sighed at this, for now, what you need to know is that I'm better and the others are unconscious but fine. He said shortly. Shinji looked to a small alcove to see Love Iwaka, Rojiro Odoribashi as well as Hiyori Sarugaki along with Hashigan Ushoda, Lisa Yadamar and Mashiro Kuna, you all know what they were, who were also in their gigais. After a couple of minutes have passed the other were up and were wondering where they were at. What the hell? Oi Shinji where are we? An irate Hiyori asked the former captain of the 5th division. It would seem we are in the human world and we are in gigais. Hashigan stated while the others looked at their new set of clothes and saw their Zanpakuto laying beside them. And that would be a correct assumption on your part, said a calm voice which startled them and they saw Naruto sitting cross-legged on a boulder. It's about time you guys woke up. I was starting to think Aizen's little experiment on you guys would have finished you off. He said and leapt of the rock. How do you know about Aizen? Shinji asked but then his eyes widened. Unless... Oh please cut that train of thought right there. That Brad doesn't hold a candle to me. I've been around before he was even a gleam in the Soul Queen's eye. You should all know who I am from the history in the Soul Academy. Naruto stated while they each had a look of confusion on their faces. He does seem familiar. Love stated and looks at Naruto for a while until Kensai's eyes widened in disbelief. Why you're Naruto Namikaze. He stammered out causing the other's eyes to widen until Makiro blinked in confusion and tilted her head to the side. Nani, who's the dandelion Kensai? The green-haired wizard asked the man who face faulted and shot back up glaring at the green-haired Shinigami while a tick mark formed on Naruto's head. Did that Brad just call me a dandelion? Naruto asked with a forced smile on his face. Makiro, you baka, you're looking at the first Shinigami aside from Sautaicho Yamamoto to ever exist. He was the founder and creator of the 13 divisions and mastered all of the forms of the Shinigami arts. Kensai yelled at his simple-minded subordinate who blinked and scratched her cheek with her index finger. He's one of the founders. He doesn't look old like an old man. Hiori stated. Plus how do we know he's not a fraud? Her answer was her freezing up when she gazed into Naruto cold and murderous eyes which made her break into a cold sweat and her knees to buckle. 
Her throat felt like it was being crushed by an invisible hand that was wrapped around her neck. The felling she had suddenly died off and she was able to breathe normally. Does that answer your question Gaki? If I can make you break with just a mere gaze imagine what I could do with my spirit pressure. You'd more than like die from a heart attack if I were to release 5% of my power. Naruto said in a serious manner as he walked towards them. Now then we have a serious problem. Due to Aizen's little experiment you all are now Shinigami who have gained hollow powers or in other words wizards which means masked soldiers. If you guys even wish to stand a chance against fighting Aizen in the future then you have to get ready by training to master your hollowfications. Naruto explained. One question Naruto-sama. Rose asked his fellow blonde. How do you know so much about wizards? Naruto looked back at him and back at the others. How do I know? Simple. He placed his right hand over his face which glowed a golden with a red outline until he swiped his hand away and was now sporting a mask that was in the shape of a fox and had three jagged red-like markings and seemed to be snarling at them. The splurs of his eyes were black with the irises being yellow like a hollows with slit pupils. I was the first to ever become a wizard. He stated getting shocked look from them. The only difference is that I have full control over my hollow powers. The mask dissipated and Naruto's face returned to normal. I will be teaching you all how to use your new powers properly and believe me when I say it won't be easy. Not only that, but I'm gonna teach you all how to face Aizen. Shinji raised an eyebrow at this. What do you mean how to face Aizen Naruto-san? The fellow blonde asked the captain of the Zero Division. What I meant by that was facing his Zanpakuto Kyoka Suigetsu. It is a powerful illusion-based Zanpakuto that can nullify and manipulate one's senses. I wouldn't be surprised if all the divisions are under the blade's spell. Naruto explained making their eyes widen. Aizen on the other is a different story. Someone like him is probably hiding his true skills so we don't know what he's capable of doing. You know this from experience Naruto-san. Kensai asked the blonde who nodded. From the time I used to be alive then yes. Naruto answered. So how will you be teaching us how to use our new powers? Lisa asked and Naruto looked back at her. To put it simply you're gonna have to face you inner hollows for control over your new abilities as well as your body. Kazuki Urahara said as he walked into the training dojo and the former captain's and lieutenant's eyes widened in shock. You, Hiori shouted and pointed an accusing finger at Kazuki who grinned back. Hey if it isn't my cute lieutenant. How are you doing Hiori-chan? The blonde genius asked cheerfully only to get Mule kicked in the face by the blonde with pigtails in her hair and sent crashing into a boulder. Dumbass Baka, it's because of you we're in this damn situation. She muttered while Naruto sweat dropped. We're really gonna have to work on your temper Sarugaki. Naruto stated and got a heated glare from here. Piss off porcupine head. No one asked your opinion on my. She suddenly found herself being hoisted up by the back of her collar by none other than an irate Naruto who now had a vein throbbing from his head and was staring him dead in the eyes. You're really starting to work my nerves Gaki and for you that's a bad thing. If you were to fight Aizen in the condition you're in now he'd kill you on the spot. He said harshly making her cringe under his gaze and look like a child who was being scolded by a parent for throwing a tantrum. Your former leader would be disappointed in how you're acting like a child. He then dropped her on her butt still keeping his gaze on the former lieutenant of the 12th division. She suddenly perked up when he mentioned her former leader. Wait how do you know about Hikafuna Taicho? She asked Naruto until she felt a hand pressed on top of her head. Because he's my Taicho, answered a calm and feminine voice. The other wizards gawked at who they saw. Hikafuna Taicho, I heard she was one of the royal guards of the Zero Division. Rose stated but when he looked at Naruto his eyes widened. But if that's the case then he must be the Taicho of the Raibantai, Zero Division. This caused the other's eyes to bug out and look at Naruto in shock. Hiori was stumped when she saw the person whom she considered as a mother figure was standing before her. Hirio I smiled and pats her former subordinate on the top of her head. You've grown since I left Yori-chan but we'll catch up later after Naruto-kun explains everything. She stated and got a nod from Hiori. Naruto on the other hand walked over to the rubble Kazuki was in and saw a leg stick out and crouches down. Oi bucket hat stop playing a possum and get your ass up unless you want to assist in my demonstration for the next five hours. He ordered with an evil grin on his face. 
That right there caused the blonde to leap out of the rubble and was now sweating bullets and Naruto I smiled. Afterwards, Naruto schedules the days they would train to face their inner hollows and once they've defeated them, train them in how to extend the time limit on how long they can use their masks. During the process the only ones who had gained dominance over their inner hollows so far was Shinji, Hashigan, Kensai, Love, and Rose. Mashiro was able to keep her mask up for about 15 hours which stumped the others especially Naruto. Lisa was able to fully dominate her inner hollow but Hiyori was a little difficult and Naruto had to resort to knocking her out to keep her inner hollow from fully emerging. After a few days of having her meditate she was finally able to beat her inner hollow but still had to go through meditation and work on her temper much to her annoyance but had to comply. Underground Training Dojo In the training area, an explosion of dust and debris was seen rising into the sky. Leaping out of it was none other than Kensai Muburuma who was donning his hollow mask. His hollow mask resembles a flat hockey face guard with six slitted eye holes arranged in two columns. It has three extensions on either side which cover the sides and back of his head. His lieutenant, Mashiro Kuna who also was donning her hollow mask which took the form of a hornet or bee. Kensai we've been at this for hours. When will Dandelion Head give us a break? She cried making a tick mark appear on his head and glare at the green-haired female Shinigami. Shut it Mashiro, you've been complaining ever since our training has started and it's getting annoying and stay focused unless you want to die. He shot back. Did you just call me a dandelion head again Mashiro? Said an annoyed voice behind Mashiro who squeaked and avoids being turned to dust by a red sero. Yikes. Foxy Chan are you trying to kill me? She shouted at the hybrid whose finger was smoking and a tick mark formed on his head. What did I tell you about making pet names? He said and fired another sero that was faster than the last one at her. Kensai appeared and blocked the attack but the speed behind it was able to force him back a little until he let out a roar and flung it to the side. Good move there Kensai, always look out for your comrade no matter how annoying they are. I'm also impressed that you managed to stop my Sero since that wasn't even a fraction of its real power. The blonde stated and he shun Pio'd in front of a shocked Kensai and delivered a roundhouse kick at his neck, sending him flying into the ground. Mashiro appeared over Naruto's head with her right leg up. Mashiro kick. She cried out and brought down an axe kick at Naruto's skull only for said blonde to stop it with just an index finger. N Nani. Naruto looked up and then grabbed her ankle. Baka. What have I told you about basing your attacks off your name and calling them out like that? He simply flung her away and she crashed into a large rock structure that collapsed over her. Afterwards he looked out of the corner of his eyes to see a flash of silver descend at his head so he sidestepped the sword trust and Lisa bypassed him. Her hollow mask is lozenge shaped with a cross shaped opening, instead of a mouth and eye slits. However, the horizontal opening allows her to see in front of her. That was very sneaky of you Lisa Chan. He chastised and pulled out his sheathed katana, Tsukiyomi and blocked two overhead strikes delivered by Love and Rose. Love's hollow mask was in the form of a traditional Japanese oni mask while Rose's was in the form of a bird beak that stuck outwards. Naruto breaks the attack and spins his body in order to deliver a roundhouse kick to Hiyori's stomach making her gasp out in pain and float down clutching her stomach and then he pointed his index and middle finger at the other two and fired two small sero blasts at them, causing an explosion and sending their smoking forms flying backwards. Two straight forward Hiyori Gaki. If that was my blade then you'd be dead. He stated and he turned his head to see a Sero heading straight for him but when it got close he simply kicked it away while Shinji, who was donning his mummified mask appeared behind Naruto and swings his blade horizontally only for a hexagonal-like barrier to appear and block the attack. Smart move Shinji, using your Sero to distract me while attempting to attack my blind spot. Naruto turned his head around and was about to draw his blade until he was ensnared by several yellow energy chains. Naruto looked down and saw Hashigan's palms clapped together hand he was donning his hollow mask which resembles a traditional Balinese demon mask, with tusks and protrusions from the top. A row of feather-like spikes also stick out from the top of the mask, similar to a Native American headdress. Good use of performing Kido without the incantations Hachi San but, Naruto uses his enhanced strength to easily break free of the level 60 spell which surprises Hachi since only Kensai was able to pull that off. You should know that even without the incantation a spell's power is lessened. 
Okasen, yellow fire flash. Naruto raises Tsukiyomi horizontally in front of him, her and generates a yellow orb that widens itself along the length of the sword and fires outward as a horizontal blast in a wide arc of yellow energy at Hachi who forms a barrier around himself while the blast hit it, though the force from it did cause some cracks to form and was sent crashing into a rock structure. Though in my case I don't have to worry about that issue since I always kept up my training. Naruto stated. A shadow loomed over him and he looked up to see what appeared to be Love wielding a large black cannibal, more than twice the height of Love himself. It is covered with bladed protrusions, and the handle itself is almost taller than Love. Haifuki no Kazuki, fire blowing gavel. Love swings Tengumaru up and it ignites itself in flames. He then points it downwards and a huge fireball fires from the tip and ascends towards Naruto. Said blonde reared his left arm back and red static started to form around his arm as did red spirit energy forms and hardens around his limb. Ball up bullet. He fires and releases it like a swift blast of spiritual energy and it heads towards the fire-based attack. As it makes contact, it doesn't dissipate, it instead punches a hole in the middle of the attack. Love was wondering why his attack was splitting until he saw a red blast of energy head towards him. Oh she. Boom. The attack hits Love causing an explosion to occur and he was sent sailing across the training area. As this happened, Naruto appeared above a surprised Love and placed a hand over the man's chest. Sokatsui, pale fire crash. Naruto fires a blue Reiatsu blast that hits Love's chest and is sent sailing into the ground and when he makes contact, an explosion occurs. Naruto raises his hand to high mask and with a single swipe, it dissipates. He reaches into his coat and pulls out a stopwatch that blinks a few time. times. He suddenly stops and roundhouse kicked courtesy of Mashiro who was donning her hollow mask and pulls her down to his level. Up. He finished with a tick mark on his head and then points his brings his hand up to her forehead and flicks her on the middle of her mask, making it shatter and sending her crashing right into a groaning love who cries out in pain. She's worse than Hiori I swear. He muttered while Kensai appeared beside him with his mask off. Tell me about it, I can tell you all the times I wanted to wring her neck Naruto-san. The white-haired man stated. Naruto on the other hand chuckles while Shinji appears with an unconscious Hiori over his shoulder and Lisa who seemed to be exhausted due to how she was panting. Rose appeared and his face and hair seemed to be scorched from the Sero Naruto fired and Hachi lost the sleeve to his right arm. Love also appeared with his shade lenses cracked holding Mashiro by the back of her collar and she had swirls in her eyes. Not bad you guys, you've improved a lot in the last year. The only thing you need to remember is to continue to use teamwork and watch each other's back. He stated, enjoy the rest of the day off but don't start any trouble. Be sure to pass that on to Hiori and Makiro and if they disobey tell them I'll be doubling their training. He said and leaves them to their own devices. Naruto was back in the compound and decided to head into his room. As he did he saw Kirio sleeping soundly on his futon since she spent all night helping Kazuki with a new device that can get them to go from Soul Society back to the human world as well as Hueko Mundo. He couldn't help but smile at her exhausted and sleeping form and was keeping in a laugh due to the fact that she was holding onto a stuffed fox plushie. He crouches down and brushes away a strand of hair and she shifted in her sleep a little. Naruto no baka I want my full body massage or it's no w sex for a week. She muttered which made him blush a little. Meow. Naruto turned his head and saw a black cat perched on the window staring at Naruto with its golden colored eyes. He smirks and walks over to the window and leans onto it smirking at the cat who tilted her head to the side. Hello Yoruichi chan, he said and uses his index finger to stroke her under her chin getting a purr from the former captain. She then hopped off the window and landed on the ground transforming into her human form, she's wearing the clothes she had during the invasion in Soul Society and smirking at Naruto. Hello to you to Naruto-kun. Did you have fun training your fellow wizards? She asked grinning at the blonde who shrugged. Yeah but it wasn't as fun as it was last year. I think Hiori is starting to figure out who's been putting itching powder into her underwear drawers. He stated causing the flash goddess to snort but cover her mouth when she heard Kirio moan and turn her body to the side mumbling. I think it would be wise if we didn't wake her up. Unlike Kazuki, Hikafuna can be even scarier than old man Yamamoto if woken up. Naruto nodded at her suggestion and they shunpo out of the compound. Forest. 
The two masters of Flash Step each appear on a tree branch and look at each other with grins on their faces. So how what are the rules this time? Yoruichi asked while Naruto's grin grew. You have until the moon rises to touch my cloak and also. Yoruichi felt her long hair fall down and Naruto had her ribbon in his hand. You have to get this back from me. Yoruichi remained stumped because he didn't even move from his spot and blinked a few times. Okay I know I didn't blink. How can you move that fast? She asked getting a chuckle from the blonde. I told you Nako chan back in my old life I was one of the fastest people alive and I intended to keep that title even in death. Not even the old coot could match my speed if he went all out. I'll admit you are fast for someone so young but you'll need at least 1000 years worth of training to even come close to catching me. He teased and shunpo's away while Yoruichi mutters about blonde assholes mocking her reputation as the fastest female alive and took off after him. The end. Now we will see you in next video.